Welcome to Washington. I'm Britt Hume with most national tracking polls still giving him an edge over Vice President Gore. George W. Bush is trying to build support in the battleground states that will be the key to this election. Bush campaigned this day in Pennsylvania where 23 electoral votes were at stake and where he once trailed badly. As Fox's Carl Cameron reports, Bush took aim at Gore on the issue of character. And we're in combat here in the state of Pennsylvania. The speech was billed as Bush's vision of responsible leadership. A leader stands on principle, and a good leader is predictable. He doesn't try to be all things to all people. Or Each time Bush outlined a leadership goal, as the applause died down, Bush attacked Gore's character, charging that real leaders don't behave like the vice president has. He doesn't change personalities, save for a different debate. Bush used nearly every Gore scandal to contrast their leadership styles, even the vice president's infamous self-defense for questionable fundraising. In my administration, we'll make it clear there is the controlling legal authority of conscience. In my administration, we will ask not only what is legal, but what is right. Not just what the lawyers allow, but what the public deserves. References to President Clinton ran throughout the speech as Bush charged that, like Clinton, go up with short-term personal gain ahead of the public. My opponent's campaign is a fitting close to the Clinton-Gore years. They are going out as they came in. Their guide, the nightly polls. Their goal, the morning headlines. Their legacy the fruitless search for a legacy. Bush said Gore's campaign tactics foreshadow a Gore presidency. He talked about ripping the lungs out of political adversaries. Part of his campaign headquarters is called, incredibly enough, the Slaughterhouse. And his staff proudly calls itself a band, and I quote, of killers. That's political killers, of course. This is a sample of what we could expect, a bitter and negative tone. Throughout this campaign, as he has here in Erie, Pennsylvania, George Bush has promised to change the tone of negative campaigning and politics in Washington. But his speech in Pittsburgh was among the most sweeping and comprehensively caustic at Gore yet. That's prompted the vice president's campaign to suggest that Bush has turned to negative personal attacks out of desperation. To which the Bush campaign responds, polls suggest there's no reason for them to be desperate. And all the governor's doing is reminding voters of the truth. And judging from the reaction at the rallies, a lot of Republicans think it's long overdue. Right? Oh, Carl, is this for purposes of offense, or is this their style of playing defense? Well, the Bush campaign says it's for purposes of offense, but it serves both purposes. At once, inoculating the Bush campaign hopes some of the Gore criticism by undermining Gore's credibility, and hopefully, from the Bush perspective, keeping Gore on defense, defending himself against these attacks, which the Gore campaign had to do today. Right? All right, Carl, thanks very much. Vice President Gore took his campaign roadshow to a couple of Midwestern battlegrounds this day. Gore held a rally in Iowa before heading off to stump for votes in Wisconsin. And as Fox News correspondent Jim Angle reports, Gore took aim at George W. Bush over one of Gore's favorite issues, the environment. And we'll get the working women of Al Gore continues his daily assault on Governor Bush's leadership using everything he can find, from newspapers to research reports, to help make his argument. Whether on the back of a fire truck or in a diner, Gore told everyone he saw Thursday about a new report suggesting global warming may be worse than previously thought. I think it's a moral issue. I don't think that uh, we can ignore the, the, uh, the obligation that we have to our kids and our grandchildren. And the Gore campaign immediately pointed the finger at Governor Bush, arguing he would do nothing to address the problem. He has said that he's not convinced that that uh, the, the pollution is causing it and that he's not convinced we should do anything other than just study it and uh, I, I disagree with that aides say governor bush does believe in global warming but wants better evidence on its cause before taking drastic action bush does dedicate 100 million dollars to rainforest protection one way to clean up the air, of course, is to use less coal, but there was no mention of that in Bettendorf, Iowa, where Gore was introduced by Richard Trumka of the United Mine Workers. But Gore attacked Bush on a second front. A report by the American Academy of Actuaries said Bush's Social Security plan could bring back deficits. 
Gore argues the individual accounts Bush proposes would rob Social Security of a trillion dollars. But one trillion promised to two different people doesn't add up unless you're using what kind of math? Fuzzy math. But Gore and his campaign conveniently failed to mention that the same report criticized his policies on Social Security. It said Vice President Gore's proposal leaves unaddressed many questions about the long-range sustainability of the program. And on Medicare, it called Gore's lockbox imaginary and dismissed his plan for reform, saying it does nothing to cover the significant shortfalls that begin to occur when the baby boomers retire. Now, Gore will use almost anything that appears in print to criticize Bush, but sometimes that can backfire, and this was one of those times. Britt? Jim, uh, Gore taped an appearance for later air uh, with Queen Latifah today. What, what, was, what was that like? That's right. Well, it was kind of strange. Queen Latifah, of course, is a, a rap artist and uh, also an actress. She started off asking him, talking to him about a pop culture quiz. And one of the first things she asked him was if he'd ever worn leather pants. Uh, the vice president said he had not worn leather pants, but he did explain that he'd once had a leather jacket when he rode a motorcycle. That turned into a story about how he used to ride around with Tipper on the motorcycle, how they once double dated on a motorcycle. They even almost got stopped by the cops. He took the motorcycle down an alley, got away from them, uh, got into a long story. And finally, it ended up with her saying, on a woman, do you like leather or lace? He said lace. I well, can't Rip. blame him for that. Hey, Jim, if he invites you to go on a motorcycle <laughs> ride or a double date, I, I, think, I'd, I think I'd politely pass. <laughs> I'll take that advice. <laughs> okay, Jim, thank you. Talk to you later. Three national daily tracking polls continue to show George W. Bush ahead of Al Gore, but the surveys vary in the strength of that lead. The Battleground 2000 poll, which we'll have more on later in this broadcast, shows Mr. Bush four points ahead of the vice president in a four-way race. The Rasmussen Portrait of America poll shows a Texas governor with a seven-point advantage over Mr. Gore, 47 to 40 percent. That's been about steady for a while now. And the USA Today CNN Gallup poll, which has been all over the place, now also shows Mr. Bush seven points ahead of the vice president. But the Zogby Reuters MSNBC survey for the second day shows Mr. Gore ahead, this time 45 to 43 percent in a four-way race. Now, also, the Fox News electoral count shows the erosion of Al Gore's numbers continues in the states. States considered safe for Gore now total 92. That's electoral votes, same as last week, but down from 156 two weeks ago. And because Gore has lost 19 points among those states leaning his way, his total is now 209, down from 228 last week. George W. Bush also stayed the same in the safe column with 205 electoral votes. States leaning to him now total 41 votes, up from 30 last week, giving the Texas governor a total of 246, up nine from last week. Toss-up states now total 83 votes. For more on our electoral map, please visit foxnews.com on the World Wide Web. And coming up, we know what Al Gore and George W. Bush have been saying on the campaign trail, but what are they saying in their ads targeted at certain areas? We'll show you some of that next. Stay tuned.